टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इंट्रेंसिक एंड एक्सट्रेंसिक पाथवे ऑफ कोएगुलेशन इंट्रेंसिक एंड एक्सट्रेंसिक पाथवे ऑफ कोएगुलेशन एज द नेम सजेस्ट इंट्रेंसिक पाथवे ऑफ कोएगुलेशन मीन्स ऑल दीज फैक्टर्स विच आर प्रेजेंट इन साइड द ब्लड दैट्स वाई द नेम इज इंट्रेंसिक पाथवे मीन्स दिस पाथवे अकर्स इन साइड द ब्लड extrinsic pathway that means extrinsic pathway occurs in the tissue that's why the name is extrinsic pathway now we'll see first intrinsic pathway of coagulation with the help of high molecular weight kininogen and calicrane with the help of high molecular weight kininogen and calicrane factor number 12 is converted into factor number 12 activated factor number 12 with the help of high molecular weight kininogen and calicrane factor number 12 is converted into activated factor number 12 this a small a indicates the activated factor numbers so factor number 12 is converted into activated factor number 12 now this activated factor number 12 in turn converts factor number 11 to activated factor number 11 with the help of high molecular weight kininogen now this factor number 11 in turn converts that factor number 9 to the activated factor number 9 now this factor number 9 converts factor number 8 to the activated factor number 8 with the help of phospholipase enzyme and calcium ions now this factor number 8 converts this factor number 10 to the activated factor number 10 now this factor number 10 with the help of calcium and phospholipase enzyme converts factor number 5 to the activated factor number 5 now when this activation of the factor number 5 occurs it converts prothrombin to the thrombin when there is a activation of factor number 5 it converts prothrombin to the thrombin and this thrombin what does this thrombin do thrombin converts fibrinogen into the fibrin what does it do this thrombin converts fibrinogen to the fibrin and also this thrombin it converts this factor number 13 fibrin stabilizing factor to the activated uh, factor number 13 so this fibrin stabilizing factor also helps in the conversion of fibrinogen to the fibrin so finally we have to uh, stabilize the fibrin with the help of this fibrin stabilizing factor so this is the pathway of coagulation or intrinsic pathway of coagulation now we'll see the extrinsic pathway of coagulation extrinsic pathway of coagulation means there is a tissue thromboplastin from the tissue that's why the name extrinsic pathway this tissue thromboplastin converts factor number 7 to the activated factor number 7 factor number 7 to the activated factor number 7 this activated factor number 7 helps to convert this factor number 12 converts this factor number 11 to activated factor number 11 and this factor number 7 also helps in the conversion of factor number 10 to the fact activated factor number 10 means actually this activated factor number 7 helps in conversion of factor number 11 to the activation of factor number 11 and factor number 10 to the activation of factor number 10 with the help of calcium ions phospholipase and tissue thromboplastin and after this factor number 10 there is a beginning of common pathway there is a beginning of common pathway means then there is a activation of factor number 5 this activated fact, uh, factor number 5 converts prothrombin to thrombin then this thrombin helps in conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin this thrombin also converts factor number 13 to the activated factor number 13 and this activated factor number 13 which is the fibrin stabilizing factor also converts fibrinogen to the fibrin now this is called as intrinsic and extrinsic pathway of coagulation